This is a summary of Chapter 10, Gender Inequality of the Textbook Introduction to Sociology by Giddens et al. Learning objectives includes the ability to understand the ways that differences between men and women reflect biological factors, sociocultural influences, and the complex interplay between the two. Be able to recognize and contrast competing explanations for gender inequality and learn some feminist theories about gender inequality. To be able to understand how sex, sex, sex segregation contributes to the gender gap in pay, learn about family leave policies in other countries, explore the effects of gender inequality on men, and evaluate the competing explanations for the persistence of gender-based violence. Sex and gender. Sex is the biological and anatomical differences distinguishing males from females, while gender refers to the social expectations about behavior regarded as appropriate for each member for the members of each sex. Gender refers not to the physical attributes distinguishing men and women, but to socially formed traits of masculinity and femininity. Gender role socialization. Gender role socialization is the learning of gender roles through social factors such as schooling, the media, and family. Then we have the construction of gender where gender roles are learned via socialization with others. So um, to the left, you see two babies. Now, I'm sure you can guess which is male and which is female, right? How did you guess that? You guess that because there's a blue blanket over one child and a pink blanket over the other. Society socializes us to accord colors to the gender. And this starts as early as birth. Understanding sex differences, especially the role of biology. Biological essentialism. The view that differences between men and women are natural and inevitable consequences of the intrinsic biological natures of men and women. Nearly all social scientists agree that theories based solely on innate predisposition neglects the vital role of social interaction in shaping human behavior. There are slight differences, biological differences between men and women, but these small differences may be amplified in such a way that it promotes behaviors that are consistent with the gendered stereotypes and expectations. Gender socialization. How are gender differences learned? Children are guided through the process of learning gender by positive and negative sanctions or socially implied forces that reward or restrain certain behavior. According to the functionalist perspective, socializing agents help maintain the smooth continuation of the existing social order by overseeing the smooth gender socialization of new generations. Critics of the functionalist perspective argue that gender socialization is not a smooth process and different agents like family, school, peer groups may be at odds with each other. Asking is it a boy or is it a girl implies that sex matters because parents will raise boys and girls in different ways. The social construction of gender. How do we learn to do gender? Theorists who believe in the social construction of gender reject all biological basis for gender differences. Precisely how do we how, how we do gender varies widely based on race, social class, and social context. 
we selectively choose to enact different aspects of gender expectations based on what we think will work best in a particular setting. Social construction of gender in other cultures. In New Guinea's Arapesh and the Hmong Dugumor tribes, men and women are expected to behave similarly to each other. In the Chambulu tribe, male and female roles were reversed from the traditional gender roles. The Aikung have specific gender roles but men and women both perform childcare and oppose violent conflict. The Baka Posh in Afghanistan are daughters whose parents dress and treat them as sons so they can experience the advantages awarded to boys. Isn't that interesting? Blurring the boundaries between gender. Adherence to the gender binary is not universal. Growing number of U.S. young adults are embracing new labels for gender identity. Cisgender, transgender, intersex. Cisgender, these are individuals who, whose gender identity matches his or her biological sex. Statistically, this is the most common gender. It would include persons who are born female who identify with female and persons born male who identify as male. You have the transgender, transgender, and that's a person who identifies as or expresses a gender identity that differs from their sex at birth. Intersex. This is identified as an individual possessing both male and female genitalia. Although statistically rare, the subpopulation is of great interest to gender scholars. Let's take a look at some sociological theories of gender inequality. Functionalist approaches. The functionalist perspective on gender argues that gender differences and specifically, men's and women's specialization in different tasks contribute to social stability and integration. Scholars who support the concept of natural differences argue that women and men perform those same tasks for which they are biologically suited in the home and outside the home, respectively. Critique of functionalism, critics argue that functionalism neglects social tensions at the expense of consensus and perpetuates a conservative view of the social world. Societies vary greatly in the degree to which they differentiate and assign tasks as being for men or for women. Feminists argue that physical differences alone cannot explain the stark gender differences in men's and women's social and economic roles. Feminist theories. The concept of the feminist theory is a sociological perspective that emphasizes the centrality of gender in analyzing the social world and particularly the uniqueness of the experience for women. There are many strands of feminist theory, but they all share the desire to explain gender inequalities in society and to work to overcome them. Liberal feminism. This is a form of feminist theory that posits that gender inequality is produced by unequal access to civil rights and certain social resources such as education and employment based on sex. Liberal feminists tend to seek solutions through changes in legislation that ensures that the rights of individuals are protected. 
radical feminism. Radical feminism posits that the form of posits that gender inequality is the result of male domination in all aspects of social and economic life. One of the prime objectives of women's movement in modern societies is to combat existing patriarchal institution, which is basically the dominance of men over women. Critique of Radical Feminists Critics argue that the concept of patriarchy is a as a universal phenomenon does not leave room for historical or cultural variations and that their view fails to recognize that not all men have equal power to act as oppressors and not all women are equally subjugated. The radical feminist places an emphasis on male violence and the objectification of female as the heart of mainstream debates about women's subordination. Social feminism. Socialist feminism focuses on the ways that gender and social class intersect. They believe that dismantling the capitalist hierarchical system must be accompanied by eradicating gendered systems of stratification. Socialist feminists believe that gender is just one of several axes of oppression and that women should work with men to fight class oppression. Black feminism. Black feminism rests on the idea that highlights multiple disadvantages of gender, class, and race that shapes the experience of non-white women. Black feminists reject the idea of a single, unified gender oppression experienced evenly by all women, and they argue that early feminists reflected the specific concerns of white middle class women. So one of the things you will read in this chapter of your text is when it looks at how we have bridged the gap in terms of females in the workplace, it will make reference to a time when uh, females entered the workplace as we entered World War II to replace men who had gone off to war. As the men returned, um, or text posits that some females went back to the home and other females stayed in the workforce. This historically has not been the case for, for black women. Black women generally has been the, um, the provider, the financial provider for families historically. And that, however, has changed over time. Postmodern feminism. The feminist perspective that challenges the idea of a unitary basis of identity and experience shared by all women. Postmodern feminist rejects the claim that a grand theory can explain the position of women in society or that there is any single universal essence or category of woman. Instead, postmodern feminism encourages the acceptance of many different standpoints as equally valid. As we look at gender inequality, this basically speaks to the inequality between men and women in terms of wealth, income, and status. Male dominance in a society is patriarchy. Although men are favored in almost all societies, the degree of patriarchy varies. In the United States, women have made tremendous progress in education, work, politics, and economics, but other forms of gender inequality persist. Unequal treatment in the classroom. 
Sociologists have found that schools help foster gender differences in the classroom. You're sitting in a class and the teacher will tend to call on male students for science and math um, queries. And for female students, the teacher may call, for, for female students, the teacher are likely to call on them for things such as the arts, things such as um, language. So we see that children are treated differently based on gender in the classroom, and this has long-term effects. Differences in how children are treated are also based on race, and that also emerges early, intersecting with gendered treatment. The gendering of college majors. You will notice that in colleges, colleges tend to steer males towards some careers and females toward other careers. So the males, when you think of a male in college, you're thinking that the male is doing something like technology, IT, um, or something technological, scientific, whereas females tend to be challenged into jobs that are not lucrative in terms of salary. For example, teaching. Ha ha. Yes. Gender inequalities in the workplace, women's participation in the labor force has risen uh, more or less continuously since the early 20th century, and they currently make up roughly a half of the workforce. During the 2008 economic downturn, 80% of jobs lost were jobs held primarily by men. Since the 1970s, the number of married and unmarried mothers in the workforce has increased. Occupational segregation. There is a term called gender typing, and gender typing is when women holding occupations of lower status and pay, such as secretarial or retail positions, while men, on the other hand, tend to hold jobs in higher, of higher status and pay, such as managerial or professional jobs. Once an occupation has become gender typed, inertia sets in, Job hierarchies, hierarchies are built around the assumption that men will occupy superior positions while a stream of women will flow through subordinate jobs. Women now occupy many jobs that used to be almost exclusively male. For example, the job of a professor was historically exclusively male. Now you see that's a job that women has infiltrated the field and have been doing very, very well. Might I say, the glass ceiling. The glass ceiling is a promotion barrier that prevents women's upward mobility within an organization. White men in stable middle class jobs in predominantly women dominated fields may experience a glass escalator. While the gender gap pay has increased among all races and ethnic groups, it is not the same for every group. White women earned 82% as much as their male counterparts compared with 89% of black women, 86% for Hispanic women, and 76% for Asian women. Gender inequalities in entrepreneurship. The number of women who own their own business has increased over the past several decades, though recent evidence suggests that women face greater obstacles than men in trying to secure funding. Sociologist Sarah Thabod did a research that suggested that women-owned businesses may be under-resourced because of unfounded negative perception of women business owners by potential funders. Sexual harassment in the workplace. Sexual harassment or the making of unwanted sexual advances by one individual toward another with which the first person persists even though it is clear 
that the other party is resistant. U.S. courts have defined two types of sexual harassment, quid pro quo and hostile work environment. About 12,000 sexual harassment complaints are filed each year, but most go underreported or unreported. Global gendered inequalities in economic well being. Globally, 50% of women participate in the labor force compared to 76% of men. Because women throughout the world also experience a greater share of housework and child care, women work longer hours than men in most developed countries. Why? You still have your nine to five, but when you come home, then you have a five to ten job taking care of the child and household work. Why you have you're off on the weekends, but on the weekends you're technically not off because you're taking care of the house and of the children. The feminization of global work of the global workforce has increased the exploitation of young, educated, largely rural women around the world, who often labor in unsafe, unhealthy low-paying jobs, lacking job security. Gendered differences in families, the vision of household labor. Despite gradual moves toward equal distribution, women still spend significantly more time doing housework than their male counterparts. Persistent gender typed expectations in which women privileged childcare and men privileged paid work have set the stage for women's economic disadvantage. In the coming decades, experts anticipate that we may see gender equity in the house in housework and childcare. Hmm. Aha. Interesting. Gender inequality in politics. Women polit politicians are overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly affiliated with the, dom the Democratic Party. Typically, the more local the political office, the more likely it is to be occupied by a female. Women are playing an increasingly major role in politics throughout the world, though the ratio of women to men in high-ranking positions in leadership is still low. To the left are women who broke the glass ceiling in terms of political aspirations. Increasing gender pay equity. Lessons from Sweden. In Sweden, all parents receive 480 days of paid leave to use until their child turns eight and can reduce their work hours by 25%. In the United States, conversely, only 12% of American employees work for companies that are eligible for even unpaid parental leave. Family-friendly policies like Sweden help to boost rates of employment, lifetime earnings, and returning workers to the same firm. Does gender inequality affect men? Does it? Hmm. Tra tra traditional gender role beliefs and practices undermine the quality of men's relationship, their freedom to choose professions that interest them, their physical and mental health, and ultimately their lifespan. Men are more likely to, than women to die of violent causes, risky and reckless behavior, and suicide. The pressure on men to make sacrifices so that they can provide for their families takes a long and short-term toll on their personal relationships. Why are women so often the targets of violence? According to WHO, the World Health Organization, um, they did a study that indicated that more than a third of all women around the world have been abused in some way 
by intimate partners. Rape. The forcing of non-consensual vaginal, oral, or anal intercourse. One in five women worldwide will be a victim of rape or attempted rape in her lifetime. Research on male victims of rape indicate that 16% of males have experienced sexual assault by the age of 18, and gay and trans transgender men are particularly vulnerable. Many rapes go unreported. Most rapes are committed by relatives, partners, or acquaintances. Why does violence persist? Competing perspectives. Some radical feminists claim that men are socialized to regard women as sex objects which leads to a sense of male sexual entitlement and rape culture, in which male domination fosters a state of continual fear in women. Female victims of sexual assault are often victimized again by judges, community members, and mass media that hold the woman responsible for their sexual victimization. This concludes the summary of chapter 10 of the textbook, Introduction to Sociology.